So on the sea salt. So right, uh, <clears throat> but at night then, you like fishing at night, dead bait, same rig type of deal. Fire it on out there. Before or maybe after the, the year on the beach. When it's happening. Before, during, and after. My buddy Mark Romero he fishes south side of Steel Beach and it's really low. Really low. It's just for whatever reason the sand crabs it's a lot easier to get during that time or whatever. I don't know what it is, but underneath the Steel Beach Pier, if you ever surf fish, is a bit of a secret spot for some sand crabs. You ever need to take some, you know, some bait down the beach with a kid or something, some of them natural. Mm -hmm. You go underneath the pier and get some, get some sand crabs. You got one, Jeff? No, I'm just, I can't, I'm going to go get granny. I'm going tonight. Don't worry. What is he coming on his bed after the what, What's a sliding hook? A sliding hook? Uh huh. Gosh, I don't know if I've ever heard of it. We need an article on how to catch white sea bass, and they mentioned using a sliding hook. Oh, okay. Okay. Like a Halley rig? No. I'm envisioning a sliding hook to be, like for instance, let's say we're on a Hyde Beach Pier right. and we're going to cast a mackerel out for thresher sharks because it happens during the summer, you catch live mackerel. So let's take a big heavy fishing rod with a big heavy sinker, cast it out, get it on the bottom. Okay, so now it's got a little teeny bit of tension, a nice angle down to the bottom. Then they have a snap swivel, a little bit of leader hook. Put in their split on, hook it up here out of the water, and down and down. And it's just and it down the closed line. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that thing gets bit, you just wind it up until it comes tight to the sinker and just let them have it. That's the way I'd do it if you told me sliding, you know, whatever, sliding hook. Um, and then speaking of sliding hooks, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the dropper loop, basic sinker on the bottom. Loop and hook, right? We do a lot of the bottom fishing. Okay, what I want to see you do is take take your hook and I want you to string it on your line just so it's swinging around, okay? Tie your torpedo on it so now you're ready to go bottom fishing. When I tie my torpedo on, I don't tie some double San Diego mm -hmm. because if I'm going to lose it, I don't want to pull 90 pounds to get it off. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just break and start over. <coughs> um, so I like to just do a couple like I'm tying my shoe or something, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, or was I losing it? Oh, okay, so now we got three swinging hook. Sorry, my brain does this. I'm actually seeing a doctor about, I got some issues, but I'm trying hard. Um, bear with me, back me up just a little bit. Where was I going? The dropper. The dropper. Oh, the dropper. Okay, okay, so the hook's sliding on the line now. We've tied our torpedo on. If I want to drop the hook, it's just going to land on my torpedo. So, see my torpedo's on the bottom. I grab my hook, and I, I, I bring it up about yay high. And if I bring it up by yay high, that's where my knot's going to be. Now my hook's still free swinging here. I want to grab the loop, my line, whatever size my dropper loop's going to be. Now my hook's going like this on there. I tie my dropper loop, and your dropper loop, you pull the loop through the hole. Now I just want you to pull the hook through the hole. By pulling the hook through the hole and pulling your dropper loop, now you have a sinker, comes up here, a loop in your line, and you have a free swinging 4-0 hook on there with a sardine doing whatever it wants to do. Rather than you squeezing your line and pushing it through the hook and half hitching it on, tying a real short San Diego or something, they make like, ah, oh, trying to do this. It came from Don Sampson, the guy that built the Qualifier 105. First boat I ever liked was chain and toilet paper rolls on. We were fishing <laughs> water with full speed. Fishing water. And that is the magic for drop loop. Because you got that free swinging hook in your drop loop. You all fish all your friends. Mac bones are nice for that. Yeah. That's a biggie. Because mm -hmm. you have the same strength as the dropper would be way out here, you know. Anyways, so what's the difference if you straight tie it out that you don't or whatever? Mm -hmm. It works. Would that work like for uh, big baits? Oh yeah, fish yeah. mackerel with it. Fish mm -hmm. mackerel with it? Oh yeah. 24 ounce torpedo? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And a, drop, and a dropper loop with a free swinging mm -hmm. AOT and a big greenback mackerel, you can make bait below the rocks. Come back up and mount up on the ridge the next morning with that mackerel. Oh, you drop down, hang on. Yeah. You get lifted off the boat with a yellow tail, you got mackerel. You know that. Yeah. So. Well, and that would also work for the big tuna as well. 
he had the video of your sinker fishing. They're really liking the rub, like rubber banding, the torpedo sinker, where your spectra and mono connection is, or where your fluorocarbon connection is. Right. They're wanting you to half pitch a rubber band with a torpedo sinker, and it just gives that sinker enough spring that when the fish eats your bait, he's not willing to just right away. He's got a little bit of spring and pulling through the water, just enough to get the hook going that you know you got to bite and you can get it into him. So that's really what I've got in the cruise to do lately. Flat ball, rubber band, and torpedoes. Let's go back to torpedoes. Let me get to save you guys some money. I was blown away. Don't remember who I learned it from. No, I'm kidding. I want you to take your torpedoes, leave one ring for tying onto them. I don't care if you're fishing little baby ones with eight pound or 500 pound and 500 pound sinker. Leave your ring on the top to tie it on, okay? You should always have a good set of dikes. You know, when I say dikes, not have that. Leo knows, you know, the round pair of cutters. Nice, big, heavy duty. Go spend $25 at Sears. Not $9.99 and let them rust and buy seven of them. Go get a real pair. Okay, they're all made in <laughs> Pakistan, but it's okay. They're going to rust, but they'll last a couple years at least. All right? Um, gosh, I like to take off on stuff. I'm so sorry. Yeah, oh, the torpedoes. The torpedoes. Okay, so you're tying onto the torpedo. So now I want you to take the other side of the torpedo. And those heavy duty dikes, as close as you can to the sinker, I want you to dike that little ring off, okay? Dike it off, and then turn your fires over so the fires are flat. Hold your torpedo, be careful of your hands, and lay your fires flat. And I want you to make the bottom of your sinker flat. And just by pounding on that lead like this four, five, six times, it'll flatten out the bottom of your torpedo and you haven't lost any weight, okay? Blown away, this guy tells me, what gets hooked on the bottom is when the sinker goes in, and that little that little ring gets caught or whatever it's doing is is it's connecting the bottom and you think it never would and he dives channel islands collect sinkers that's why this guy knows this right <laughs> mr hoffman he runs one of the dfg boats up there because he runs the thresher up there you guys probably oh, yeah. up there so um i'm telling you what i'm lucky to lose a torpedo i don't care if i go on the half day boat or i go to guadalupe i don't lose them anymore Unless I'm being really foolish and the guy tells me that 